Hello everyone. So today I'm going to teach you a bad word. I'm going to teach you a bad word just because I don't want you to be using it. I'm going to teach you that it's a bad word and you should not use it. I, I sound like a really bad parent. One of those that says, I'm going to make you smoke a lot so you don't smoke or something. Anyway, no, uh, I, I want to teach you a bad word that you should never be using in your vocabulary as a freelancer. Whether you're a freelance translator or any other type of freelancer, pretty much in any type of business, you should not be using this word. And, but I'm not going to tell you what the word, no, I will tell you what the word is. Actually, no, I won't tell you what the word is, not yet. Uh, first of all, I want you to do a quick exercise. I want you to look back to the past week, the past seven days, and I want you to think in the past seven days, for all of you who are looking for clients, which I'm assuming is going to be pretty much all of you, whether you're looking for your first clients or looking to grow your business or, you know, get more clients. Anyway, I, I imagine that's pretty much all of you. I want you to look in the past week. How many clients have you contacted? By, by clients, I mean prospective clients, people who could become your clients. Like how many new people have you tried to contact? This can be whether you're on Pros or, or Upwork or you know any of those places where you can, they, they give you a list of potential clients and you try to contact them and send them cold emails or just uh, you know searching online and trying to find clients there and cold contacting them. Uh, whatever it might be, I don't care. Think in the past seven days, how many have you contacted? You have a number? More or less, you got it. Okay, remember that number and put it aside because we're going to we're going to come back to that. Um, and so now I'm going to today I'm going to break open the whiteboard. Uh, but I'm going to and my phone is making noise. And this this actually has exactly to do with what I'm talking about. But we'll get into this. So oh yeah yeah sorry so the um. The, uh, the word that I th I'm saying is a bad word that you should never be using is multitasking. And you're going to think, okay, yeah, yeah, I've heard that before, you should have multitask, blah, blah, blah. No, but let me get into this because I really am a fervent believer in this and this is why I, and I'm going to explain why I am and why I think this is such, a, but it's such actually a really useful thing to keep in mind. Um, first of all, you, so you have that number, how many clients you contacted. Now, Let's do something. Let's do a, a quick exercise. Let's say you want to contact a certain number of clients. Um, I'm going to say, I don't know, 20 clients. Now you can go on Translators Cafe or stuff like that. This is for freelance translators. I'm sure all types of freelancers have different types of places they can go to. Uh, let's say, you know, you can go there and find, you know, 20 prospective uh, clients like these agencies and get their contact email right away. But let's say that's not the case. Let's say you're not there and you have to use Google or you know whatever and you have to search for cold contacts because that takes a bit longer. So in this scenario, just to make it easier as an example, I'm going to say you are a translator. You know, if to, Let's say you're a Korean to English translator and you specialize in uh, legal translations, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll my market would be law firms, lawyers, and uh, who, who you know who speak Korean and uh, Korean Korean law firms, stuff like that. You do Korean to English translations, so the easiest thing would be to find law firms in Korea who maybe haven't translated their website into English. You know, that's a pretty easy one. So I would say twenty things. You do a search, uh, and you know you find the first. You know, you do search law firms in Seoul or whatever it might be, and then you'll get a list. I mean, you write it out in Korean, I assume, and then you get a list of a certain number of these, and then uh, you, you know, first website, or you know, they already have the website in English, fine. Second one, maybe that one too. Third one doesn't, so you get their contact email. And you do this 20 times. I'm going to say that, you know, you click, dun, 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 in 20 minutes, you can get email addresses from 20 different law firms. You know, you're going to have a list. And, you know, even if it's one yes, one no that has their website in English or not, you can see it right away. You get their contact email. Let's say you're a bit more picky about the contact email. You don't want just any contact email, but you want one of the better partners uh, to contact. So let, I'll give you 30 minutes for this. Now, this is 30 minutes. Uh, let's keep track of all this because it's, we're going to come back to it. So 30 minutes, you are uh, collecting email addresses, right? And then you need to write up a letter to send to these people um, and, uh, you know, a pitch letter or something like that explaining your services. I would put, uh, I, you know, I, I would say most of you, by the way, if you've taken my course, if you follow many of my other videos, you already have something like this. You have a letter of introduction, you have a cover letter, you have, um, you know, a letter, an email that you can send out to perspectives that kind of says more or less what you do. Let's say you don't. Okay, 
but you know what you do more or less and and uh, and so you can write something up you say hey how are you doing I noticed your website is isn't in English yet I just want to let you know I'm a Korean to English uh, translator and I could do this at whatever you prefer for free if you put my name at the bottom of your website say translated by or you know for a certain fee or something and you know feel free to contact me to discuss it I'm available at this email address this phone number whatever it might be and uh, and in fact yeah so write something up like that and that I'm sorry that's not going to take you more than 10 minutes to write something up like that and so I would have that written let's say 10 minutes and then you send these emails out you've got 20 email addresses to send them out to you have the thing to send out so it's basically copy and paste right you can get that done like that I'll give you a bit more time here as well because every now and then maybe you see someone who went to your same high to the same college or who uh, you know a law firm that you know for some other reason who knows they live right around you know their office is right around the corner from where you live or or you have dealt with someone in their you know some capacity or whatever it might be there are certain ones that you can personalize it a bit and there in the first sentence you can be like hey I noticed you went to my same school what year were you or did you have misses whatever I don't know whatever it might be and uh, you know so a couple of them you can personalize and the other ones you can just send out the stock email maybe you say I was on your website, such and such partners, just to, you know, to show that you person. So every, every one of them you can personalize just by putting the name of the website, but otherwise you can just send them out. I'm sorry, 20 emails. If you're copying and pasting and just changing maximum one sentence, you can do it in 20 minutes. Okay, so that's 20 minutes. And this means that within one hour, you have sent out 20 email addresses. A couple things. First of all, first of all, I want you to think back how many emails did you send out in the past week? What was that number? Was it, was it 20 or was it less or was it more? Was it the equivalent of, uh, you know, say this, of, uh, of sending out 20 email addresses in one hour? I'm going to, I'm going to say no. Now, the other thing you're probably thinking of uh, right now is you're like, okay, but this is not really realistic because you're like, yeah, it's possible, but it will be a lot of work, you know, to have to do this and blah, blah, blah. But here's where my bad word comes in of multitasking, because actually I think this is very doable. Now I said I was going to break out the whiteboard and now you can see if you have one hour, you spend the first half hour getting all the email addresses, then you spend 10 minutes writing up an email to send to all of them. Then you spend 20 minutes sending out the email. One hour, 20 emails that you sent out. So, again, you might say, well, okay, yeah, you know, in theory, if you're a robot, you can do this. But, I mean, in, you know, in practice, that's not going to happen. Except it will. As long as you get rid of all your distractions. For me, I'm, I know I'm terrible at distractions. And, you know, if I don't have, as you, as you heard my phone earlier, if I don't prepare it ahead of time, uh, then I am going to get distracted somehow. So when I'm working on my translations, on my stuff, as you know, my videos are just something I do extra. My main job is, is being a translator and running my agency. When I'm working on stuff, when I need to get in the zone and do stuff like this, then my phone is off. I, uh, I have a program called Self Control on my laptop, which basically anytime I'm wasting time on any website, I add it to the blacklist there. And so, and I know I've talked about self-control before in a past uh, video, but I added to that blacklist and that means that I cannot access it. I go to self-control, I say, I put it on for one hour, say. For that hour, I cannot access Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, pretty much any news site. Uh, I think Wikipedia, you know, anytime I find myself wasting time on a website, I add it to that list because I want to block it. I don't want to waste time with it. Um, and physical distractions too. For those of you who are in school, I'm sure, at least for me, every time I had a test, I realized my apartment got really, really clean. <laughs> I started cleaning everything just to procrastinate and not to study. And the same happens here. You know, I'll start reading through those books or I'll start doing this or that and the other. And that's why actually I usually need to go to a coffee shop at least once a day to work and get in the zone there. Because there I can sit down. I have, uh, I have my headphones on because the music around distracts me. So, uh, you know, I have, and I've talked about this before as well. You can find productive playlists, productive music uh, playlists on YouTube. Uh, otherwise you can have white noise, can noise cancellation headphones. Uh, classical music is another good thing. There's Chilled Cow, which is a channel on YouTube that I like, has lo-fi beats and stuff. For me, any type of music 
that has no words and, you know, kind of drowns out the other stuff that I can keep in the background helps me to work. I make it as easy as possible to get work done, to get into the zone. For those of you who've seen social network, uh, what do they call it? Um, being plugged in, you know, when the kids are plugged in, then no one can, uh, you know, nothing disturbs them, nothing distracts them. They're, they're just plugged in and they don't, that's how you need to be. You need to be plugged in and plugged in means not multitasking. Your phone isn't bothering you. Emails aren't bothering you. You're not going to Facebook all the time. You're not checking with this. You're not doodling with that. And you're not getting distracted by anything. If you're not getting distracted by anything, you can't not do this. Okay? Because like we said, it takes this amount of time to get this done. And if you're not doing anything else at all, you're getting this done. And so within an hour, you're going to have, you're going to have contacted 20 different people, 20 different prospective clients. And that's not a bad number, okay? Because if you can do this in the morning and then later in the afternoon, you can do it again. In fact, we start off slow. Let's say you just do this in the morning. You schedule it ahead of time. I like to schedule the night before. You schedule, say, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm going to do this. And, uh, you know, whatever it is you need to get into the zone. Contact clients or, you know, for me, I, I try to start off with whatever is the thing I want to do the least. You know, that's my first thing when I wake up in the morning. I have that hour set aside. And, you know, you have everything ready, you have your coffee, you have whatever, and you just get to work. At that point, what you're going to find is, first of all, you can't not get it done because you will get it done with no distractions. Second of all, by the time that first hour stops, or even if it's 9 to 10 a.m., by 10 a.m., it's already a good day. You've already contacted 20 clients. So you've already had a good day and you're way ahead of the curve already. And this is a great feeling to have, at least for me. I love this feeling. And it's kind of addictive. And the problem or the, the good thing and the bad thing is that when you first start off with this, it's going to be very hard. If you've been multitasking up till now, you don't, you're not used to getting in the zone and all that, you're going to get distracted. The important thing is to keep track of what distracts you and find a way not to get distracted by it in the future. If it's, if it's your phone, you turn your phone off. I'm sorry. During that hour, no one calls you. I don't care what's happening. Uh, if you, um, you know, if it's something on online, they have a bunch of programs that you can block whatever websites, whatever programs, so you don't waste time on them and you can get work done. If it's something here, like physical, you figure that out as well. Go to a coffee shop, go to a co-working space, whatever it takes for you to get your work done. You try to make it as hard as possible to get distracted, as easy as possible to get your work done. And that way you can get into the zone. And the good news is the more you do it, the easier it gets because you will get better and better at it. And at that point, it, um, you know, like I've noticed with myself, I get better and better at it, at getting stuff done. And the amount of stuff that I can get done now compared to how it was years ago I mean, is crazy. And I love it, you know, because I can think up whole campaigns or whatever it might be to do, and I can get them done. And it's all because of this, because I'm not multitasking, because I'm monotasking, unitasking. Poly, mono, multi, uni, unitasking, because I'm unitasking. Um, and so you should all unitask. How is that not a word? Because it sounds weird. Anyway, do not multitask. You need to unitask. And it really pays dividends. And the great thing is it pays more and more over time as you get more and more used to it and you're able to do it more and more, get plugged in, get in the zone, unitask, whatever it might be, you will be able to accomplish so much more. And that's why... I'm saying multitasking is a bad word. You never want to be multitasking. When people say, oh, multi I'm really good at multitasking. I'm a great multitasker. Uh, they say certain types of people or, or women are better at multitasking, stuff like that. None of that's true. Multitasking is not good ever. And when, especially when you're trying to get work done, do not multitask. Always get in the zone, get plugged in, unitask. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to register that as a word. I'm going to copyright that. Um, and that way you can get so much more done. And I'm a fervent believer in that. And that's what I wanted to convey to you today with this whiteboard and everything. And so I know I got into it quite a bit, but because I'm sure you've heard people say this before, don't multitask, but it's something I, I, you should really take seriously. Don't just think it's some other trite thing, but it's something you should really take seriously. You, um, if you want to get work done. And, uh, so anyway, you know, you do something like this, you'll be contacting hundreds of clients a week and that way you will be finding new clients. And, you know, that's, it's the numbers and that's how it's going to work. So that's all I want to 
talk about with you today. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to click thumbs up so I know what works and what doesn't. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and you'll get more videos like this in the future dealing with freelancing, with freelance translation, stuff like that. And otherwise, I will talk to you. Oh, uh, sorry, before I go off um, and before I log off, uh, in case you haven't noticed, every Friday there is a video by my sister, the consul Consultant's Corner. And she is, uh, she's a freelance consultant, freelance business consultant. And so she's been giving her advice on our channel for free, <laughs> at least so far. So don't forget to check it out because I'm, you know, I'm giving you stuff that I just think of here and there, like don't multitask. But she's actually giving advice, you know, she gets paid by her clients uh, to give this advice. And, you know, so this has real value to it, especially for those of you who maybe have already started out and you're kind of want to take it to the next level. You want to, uh, you know, become more professional and, uh, and, you know, do things like the big boys do them, you know, and uh, like the professionals do them. Then her videos really, it's invaluable information and you're getting it here for free every Friday, Consultants Corner. Don't forget to check it out. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.